In this video, we'll be looking at the differences between tick-based and sample-based tracks in Pro Tools and when you might choose to use them. You can set any track to either sample-based or tick-based. By default though, MIDI and instrument tracks will be tick-based and audio tracks will be sample-based. So what's the difference between sample-based and tick-based tracks? Well, anything which is sample-based will maintain a fixed position in relation to the start of the session. It's unaffected by changes to the session tempo. So if you have a look at this session, the drum loop track is currently sample based, as we can see from the track time base selector here. The tiny little blue clock indicates this. Everything else in this session is MIDI, and it's currently set to the default time base for MIDI tracks, which is tick based, indicated by this little green metronome. Tick based content will conform to the session tempo, maintaining a fixed bar and beat location, even if the session tempo changes, so I'll just run a short section of this. So the drum loop is running with the MIDI and it's currently at the same tempo, which in this session is 120 beats per minute as you can see here. However, if I change the session tempo, the MIDI conforms to the new tempo, but the audio doesn't at this point because it's sample based. So let's just have a look at that. I'll make this say 100. And you can probably see that the MIDI has changed tempo. Nothing changed about the audio, so now we end up with this. So I'm just going to hide this drum track for a second and make this other one visible. And before I go any further with this, I'll just change the tempo back again. Okay, so I've got a sample of a bell which has been positioned to play at the start of every bar. And at 120 beats per minute, it runs in time with everything else. But the problem is, if I change the tempo again, it's going to be out of time because the audio samples on this track won't move with the bars. Let's just take a look at that. Maybe I'll take it to 130 this time. And sure enough, out of time. So basically because this is sample based, a tempo change hasn't affected it. The audio has remained exactly where it is in relation to the start of the session so it hasn't conformed to the bars and beats. So what we ideally need to do is to get this to match. So firstly, let me just take the tempo back to 120 again, and I'm now going to switch the time base of this track to ticks. So just click on the time base selector, choose ticks. We get this little green metronome so we know it's now tick based. And when an audio track in Pro Tools is tick based, the start time of any audio clips on that track will maintain their relationship to the tempo grid. So if the tempo is changed now, the sample will still be triggered at the start of every bar. Let's change this to something, I don't know, 90. There you go. So you can see it's still on the grid. And if I run this, it'll be significantly slower, but at least these will still trigger at the start of every bar. And if I were to change that to something else, uh, one tenth, then it would follow it. Okay, so let's just get rid of that for a second and bring back this drum loop track. And if I run this, you'll hear that it's out of time because I've changed the session tempo again. So to demonstrate this next part, I'm just going to once again switch this back to 120, which was the tempo at which the drum loop matches. Just play a little bit of that. And at this point, I'm going to change the drum loop track to tick based. Okay. Now I think I'll duplicate this a couple of times, so there we've got three iterations of it, and these should all run in time. If I start it part way through, you'll hear that. So now that we've got the time base of this track set to tick based, you might expect this to match the session tempo, but as you'll see, it doesn't yet. So I'll change this to 100. And straight away you can see that something's gone wrong. And if I run this, you'll hear that it's clearly out of sync. Okay, so what's happened here? Well, basically, the start point of these three clips are still at their original bar positions. Bar 1, bar 5, and bar 9. 
but the tempo of the drum loop clip itself hasn't changed and we've been left with a total mess. And that's because, as I mentioned, tick-based audio tracks will only follow the session tempo based on the start point of the clips. If you want the audio itself to change speed, you'll need to enable elastic audio on that track as well. Elastic audio is a whole subject in its own right and it can go quite in depth, so I think I'll save the detailed explanation of that for another video. But for now, let me just quickly revert this back to 120 as a clean starting point. So there we've got it as we had, everything's currently in tempo. If I then click on the elastic audio selector for this track, we have a few options here and I'm going to choose rhythmic because we're dealing with percussion. Okay, and when you first do this, you might see the audio on the track grey out as it goes offline very briefly while Pro Tools analyzes its tempo. So this was only a very short sample, so it's ready to go. And now that we've got the track set to tick based and we also have elastic audio enabled on the track, any tempo changes will cause the audio on this track to play back at a speed which matches the session tempo. So let's just go a bit crazy with this, set it to 150 beats per minute. You can see it's conformed to the tempo. We know that something's changed because this little indicator in each clip appears when some elastic audio processing has been done on that clip. So let's run it. Okay, it sounds a bit out of control, but it's in tempo. And if I change this down to 100, this will follow. Incidentally, you can change MIDI and instrument tracks to sample based if you wish to. So on here, for example, you do have the option of doing that. And this would be useful if, for example, you were triggering Foley sounds such as footsteps for a post-production project and you wanted to ensure that it didn't move in relation to the video rather than following any tempo changes that you might have in the session. Let me just mute this drum loop again. And one final point which relates to all of this is that you can audition clips in a workspace browser at the session tempo. So I'll just open up a workspace and then go to the session itself and the audio files. And I'm just going to find this drum loop clip so I can audition it. And as long as this little metronome is enabled, as in highlighted in green, any previewed audio for which Pro Tools has calculated a tempo will conform to the session tempo. So let me change this again. Let's reduce it right down 60, say, and then preview this. You can see it matches the tempo. Not only that, but you can also play it in sync with the session. So. I don't know, I'll go with 140 this time. Start the session running. I've got, I'll just hide this in fact so it's not confusing. We've basically not got the drum loop playing now. Start this going, open up the workspace, find the clip, click on the little speaker icon or press the space bar, and it'll start running in sync with the session. Okay, if I change the session tempo just to illustrate this, let's put it back to 120 start this running, go to the workspace, find the clip, make sure this is on, click on the speaker, so that's a really useful feature. Well that's it for now, thanks again for watching, there'll be more videos to follow soon, bye for now.